It is day seven of my journey using DWM and the suckless utilities, in particular ST, the terminal, simple terminal, DMenu, which is a command launcher, and Surf, which is the suckless web browser. So how are things going? Uh, it's day seven. The last video I made was day two of using DWM. So it's been five days since the last video. Just want to give you guys a quick update. Uh, there's a lot of really, really good things about DWM that I just love. And there's some things that I just absolutely hate. Let's discuss. So day seven with the DWM. What has changed in DWM over the last five days since I, I made that last video about me living in DWM? Well, let's take a look at the desktop. So the desktop obviously is going to look a little different here because uh, for one thing, I've changed the wallpaper. I've played with the color scheme a little bit, but the big thing that I did was I added about eight patches to DWM. I, I patched DWM quite a bit because by default, DWM is so stripped down and so bare that it really is missing a lot of functionality that you would expect any tiling window manager to have built in. It is missing a few things that I think really should just be baked into DWM. I don't, I can't imagine why some of these patches that I had to, to patch, why they're not included by default, because I can't imagine anybody not wanting some of these patches. So let me open up a terminal. So let me open up ST, this is the simple terminal. I'm going to CD into the DWM directory where I have the source code. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to do a LS and it will show you the patches that I have added. So the first one is the alpha patch, DWM alpha. That gives me transparency in this panel at the top. I have a slight transparency in the panel at the top. You may not be able to tell against this wallpaper because not much is going on at the top, but it does have a slight transparency to it that I've set. Uh, the next patch that I included was DWM attach aside. The attach aside patch, what this does is, by default, DWM does something strange when you open up a second window. You open up a second window and this window here, the first window, goes to the right hand pane and the new window becomes the master window. And then you open up a third uh, program, it becomes the master and the second one that you you know, it gets pushed to the right-hand column, et cetera, et cetera. That is not what I expect the default behavior to be. I expect when I open up a second window that it appears on the right-hand column. The next one also would appear, uh, well, it actually did not work correctly that time. And I have noticed this with this attach aside program, but at least it does it with the first two windows. So yeah, at least with the second one, it will place it in the right-hand pane rather than the window I'm working on gets pushed to the right hand pane. For those of you that uh, are familiar with Vim, if you use Vim, Vim has this annoying feature with it when you split uh, Vim. When you do a split, uh, the document you're working with gets pushed to the, the new split, the you know split on the right hand side, and the second document you're opening now becomes, I guess, in the master window in, of Vim, if you want to use that terminology. I don't like that functionality in Vim. I always change it in Vim. I don't like that here in my tiling window manager either. I want the master pane always to be the very first thing I opened. Uh, if I want to switch it, I, I can switch it manually, but I, I don't want this master pane to always be the next thing I open, if that makes sense. And that is what that attach aside diff does. Let me ls again. I can actually see everything in this directory. The next uh, patch that I, I included was DWM auto start, which gives me the ability to use a auto start file. So if I cd into dot DWM is the config directory here and ls and I have an auto start dot sh file. So we take a look at that in Vim. The auto start patch gives me the ability to create this auto start.sh file and DWM will read it and it will launch whatever is in my auto start file. It launches Compton, which gives me um, compositing, gives me the transparency in ST and in DWM's top panel. Nitrogen, which restores my wallpaper. It also launches the URXVT daemon if I want to use URXVTC as my terminal. I'm using simple terminal right now, but I do like URXVT, and I usually use it 
with the daemon. And then the last thing is these four lines, which are basically a little shell script that gets me the time and date in the top panel. So that is my auto start.sh file. Let me cd back into the directory with the source code. All right. The next patch that I included or that I added was the cycle layouts. So by default, you don't really have the ability to cycle through the layouts here in DWM. The only thing is, I think by default, mod plus spacebar cycles either tiling or floating just between those two but i've added a couple of extra layouts and how do you cycle through them well you you can't unless you add the cycle layouts patch and now i have it so that mod control and then either comma or period depending on which direction you want to cycle through your layouts well let me open up some windows so you can see the layouts now i have the ability to cycle through the various layouts if that makes sense and anyway let's close some of these windows here and do an ls again get everything back on the screen here the next patch that I added was DWM grid mode. Grid mode adds a layout. I'm in it right now, actually. This is the grid mode layout. So you see how now I have this grid pattern rather than the standard master and stack pattern. Now I can go back to the master and stack pattern since I have the cycle layout patch. I can cycle back until I get to the master and stack layout. And ls again you notice every time i open more windows uh i end up losing the text here i have to ls again to get the full text here uh some kind of little quirk with st but it is what it is the next patch that i uh added here was rotate stack what does rotate stack do well that is actually one of the most important things that i uh added here to dwm because by default every tiling window manager i know of has the ability to rearrange the windows in the current window stack. Meaning if I want to take H top and I want to move it to the master pane, I have that ability. Or move it to the top. Or take VIFM, move it to the bottom, or move it to the master pane. I have the ability to do that with key bindings. You do not have that ability with DWM out of the box. You have to add this rotate stack uh, patch here. And now with that patch, now you have the ability to Rearrange the windows however you want. Uh, that really, in my opinion, absolutely should be baked into DWM out of the box. The fact that I needed to do that through a patch blows my mind. I can't imagine anybody that would want a tiling window manager that doesn't have the ability to rotate through the window stack like that. And the last patch that I went ahead and added, just because I know many of you guys are probably going to be interested in this patch, I went ahead and did the useless gap patch. And you can already see what the useless gap patch does. It gives me the ability to have gaps. So if I go back to the grid mode, which is the most obvious mode, you guys can see I've got gaps between the windows. Uh, very useful? Probably not. They call the patch useless gaps. <laughs> Because it really is kind of useless. There's, it doesn't do much for you and kind of wastes screen real estate. I guess visually, I guess it, for some people it could help differentiate between the various terminals you have open or whatever windows. But uh, I probably, if I was going to use gaps, I probably wouldn't make the, the gap very big. Maybe two pixels, just enough to barely see you know, a gap between the windows. Like what I have here I think is about uh, 10 pixels, 20 pixels in some spots. That's too big, even even for my taste. Some people, when you see these screenshots on Unix porn, you know, have like 50 pixel gaps. That's, that's way too much uh, wasted screen real estate for me. So DWM, yeah, I've done a lot of patching. Uh, first thing, if you guys that are not familiar with how to patch DWM, if you want to try this out, and again, I've said this, I think, every video I made about DWM so far. It, this is not for beginners. This is not, this should not be your first experience with a tiling window manager because uh, you're going to hate it. <laughs> because, again, it, this is, it's for advanced users. Uh, they tell you that straight up at the suckless.org website that the DWM is a tiling window manager really meant for Linux enthusiasts and experienced advanced users, right? Anyway, you go to suckless.org, you click on the tab DWM, and you go to patches. And there is a very long list of patches available 
for you to choose from. For example, here toward the bottom is the useless gap patch, and you download the diff, the diff file. And you want the latest one, the latest one that goes with your version of DWM. I'm using the git uh, version of DWM, so I have the latest. So I need, needed the DWM useless gap 6.1 diff, the latest one. So how do you apply these patches? I did this on a previous video, but for those of you that weren't with me on the previous video, let me show you how these patches work. So uh, I already CD'd into the DWM directory where I have the source code, and I download that useless gaps diff file, for example. That's the patch that I want, the useless gaps patch. And to patch it, you just simply type patch space dash p1 space. The less than symbol, it's very important that this become the less than symbol and not the greater than symbol. <laughs> DWM, oh, if I can type, and then auto complete here, uh, tab complete with a bash, <laughs> the bash shell. Uh, you need to run that command. Patch dash p1 less than name of diff. You run that. I'm not going to run it. I've already run it, but hopefully it builds fine. If it does, all you need to do is recompile. Uh, DWM, recompile DWM, how do you do that? Well, you do a sudo make install. That's it. You're done. So that's the patch, if it builds correctly. Now, the more you patch this thing, you're going to have some patches fail. I had some patches fail. What do you do when the patch does not patch itself, you know, automatically with that patch command? Well, you can still patch this thing, you just have to do it manually. How do you do it manually? Well, the diff file tells you exactly how to do it. So if I vim and dwm the useless gaps diff, this is a diff file. What does this tell you? It tells you exactly the changes that need to be made. This is what the patch should do on its own, but if for some reason it fails, you can manually do this yourself. It tells you what file it's changing. In this case, dwm.c, that file. It's taking away these two lines. You see the minus symbol in front of it. It's adding these two lines. You see the plus symbol in front of it. So it gives, and it gives you a clue of where these lines are. Uh, you see it tells you lines, and then it gives you stuff above and below what it's changing. So it gives you some clue of what file it's changing and where in the file it's changing this stuff. So you could actually patch this stuff yourself if for some reason you know the command, that patch command, does not work. Uh, I did that a couple of times successfully, just patched these things myself. I, I wasn't very happy about it. It is kind of tedious. Some of these patches are very simple. You just open up one or two files and add a couple of lines. No big deal. Some of these patches are very involved. They change several files and add a ton of stuff to these files. And it is kind of tedious. I don't like patching <laughs> DWM. This is the one thing that... I have really grown to kind of hate is the patching aspect of DWM. Now, once you patch it, you know, with all the stuff you really need, are you going to be patching it that often? No. And to be honest, now that I've done it a bunch, you know, seven or eight times, uh, you know, I've kind of figured out how to do the patching. Uh, the more you do it, especially doing it manually, you know, having to open the files and, and look for the right lines to delete, the right lines to add. Now that I've done that a few times, it would be easier the next time I had to do this. Uh, plus, I'm becoming more and more familiar with the code of all these DWM files. Uh, the DWM.c file, and you know, the, of course, the config.h file, and the drm.h file, whatever. All those files in the source code. Now that I've played around with them a little bit, I, I mean, you get familiar with them. So I think you know, it, it wouldn't be that difficult for somebody like me to keep my own build of DWM around. I don't think it would you know, put me off that bad. It's just the initial phase, right? It's just getting started with DWM. I think a lot of people would probably give up way before they got to the point where I'm at here with DWM, which I'm pretty happy with what I've got right now. I kind of, kind of like everything that's going on here. And, you know, I've, I've figured out pretty much everything I want to do in DWM. Uh, the ST terminal I haven't played that much with. I, I've only patched it to add transparency. The, I did a, the alpha patch for ST, kind of like I did the alpha patch for DWM. Uh, that's the only patch I've done to ST. ST, the terminal, seems to work. 
Uh, I haven't needed to patch it. I really haven't played with D menu that much, other than you know it. It's a command launcher. I use it to launch my programs, but I haven't even like looked through the D D menu patches. Uh, so I really should play more with D menu because that's a fascinating program, very powerful program. I haven't played with Surf at all yet. And Surf is actually one of the more interesting things I really want to play with is the Surf browser uh, because I, I think it's a pretty cool program, actually. Uh, I think I, I'm interested. Could I make this my daily driver as far as a web browser? Could Surf replace something like Firefox or Chrome? Because I think those, you know, modern day web browsers are so bloated. They are just heavy. I don't, you know, as soon as you open up a web browser, you know, you're pushing way over a gig of RAM immediately with, without any tabs open. So how would something like Surf, uh, as far as system resources, how is it on system resources? I haven't played with it that much. I don't know. Uh, it would be interesting to see if I could actually get Surf to the point where maybe I could even just delete Firefox and Chromium and Vivaldi off my system. Uh, I'm not sure if that is possible, to be honest. Before I go, I need to do a special thanks to Ansem, Carlos, Chris, Dylan, Leo, Rob, and Tony. They are the producers of the show. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without them, this show wouldn't be possible. The show is also brought to you by all my fine ladies and gentlemen, those supporters, all those names on the screen. Each and every one of them help make this show possible. If you would like to support my work, please consider doing so over on Patreon. You will find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys. 